Tip number one. You don't need to buy $500 equipment right off the bat. You don't know th that you're going to actually want to do this that long. Maybe you'll find out electronics isn't for you. For example, multimeters. You don't need to go out and buy a Fluke 87.5 for $400 right when you start. You can start off with a simple multimeter like this one that I got on Amazon for I think $35 and free shipping. It does everything that like the it'll do everything that the Fluke will do, just not as accurate. And it's a lot cheaper. Highly recommend getting a cheap multimeter to start off. Comes with decent test probes. They're sharp. And it'll do everything you need it to do for very basic electronics. I have never once wished that I'd gotten something more expensive. The only thing that I wish it did that this one doesn't do is I wish it had temperature. And I think you can buy one with temperature for $10 more. Tip number two. You don't need to buy an expensive bench power supply right off the bat when you can get a cheap ATX power supply for 20 or 30 bucks online. This, is, this power supply cost me $19 with shipping. And it has 5 volts at 25 amps, 12 volts at 9 amps, negative 5 at 1 amp, negative 12 at 1 amp, 3.3 at 15 amps, and a 5 volt standby at 1 amp. Now if you compile those voltages you can get you can take the 12 and the negative 5 and get 17 and you can take the positive 5 and the negative 12 and get 17. So you have dual rail power supply with 17 volts by an LM317 an LM and an LM337 for like 50 cents a piece and you have an adjustable power supply for under 50 bucks. Tip number three, salvage components as much as you can. These are all components that I have salvaged and these are just a few of them. Small capacitors, diodes, resistors, ICs, most of these are pretty much useless but you can get some MOSFETs and stuff, and large electrolytic capacitors. So, all you need to do is buy one of these, and I think it was $11.99 at Radio Shack. It can remove the components from circuit boards. Check out my video, it's Basic Electronics number 3, desoldering. Definitely worth it. The tips are about $2 a piece, because you will burn through those things, like, instantly almost, if you use this thing. But, look at all the parts I've got. All cost me nothing. Like broken VCRs, a CRT monitor that went out. Most of the parts in there are still good. There's usually just a couple things that are bad. This will save you hundreds if you're building stuff. Like, let's go over here. Most of it's kind of dark, but these are my uh, some of my permanent projects. I didn't really buy that many parts for these. A lot of it was salvaged. This can save you a lot of money in the long run. Definitely recommend it. Tip number four, parts cabinet. Can't touch it. Um, parts cabinets will save you so much time just digging for parts. Like, my bench is relatively neat. I also built this shelf. But they're so handy because you can just find parts. You can label them. This is just electrical tape. And each thing you can, uh, it's really easy. Like, oh. Uh, they're not labeled correctly right now, but... Oh, look, a box full of switches. That was easy. Oh, look, there's a relay. You know what's in there? Oh, wires. Just strap wire. Speakers. It saves you so much time digging through boxes and stuff. Highly recommend it. 15 or 20 bucks at Menards, Target, Walmart, anywhere. Highly recommend it. Saves you a lot of time. Tip number five. Kits. Kits are usually the best way to learn electronics because they come with a great, they usually come with great books. Like this electronic learning lab came with two 96 page manuals. This Discover Electronics kit from Sparkle Lab came with a 36 page manual. They will teach you so much in such a short amount of time and 
It'll save you so much time just scratching your head trying to figure things out. Like, the descriptions are usually easy to understand, like capacitors, uh, comparing them to water tanks and transistors to switches. It's very easy and helpful. Kits usually cost quite a bit for the amount of parts that they give you. Like, this cost 50 bucks. There is not $50 worth of parts in there. But the time that it saves you and how much you learn from them, definitely worth it. Highly recommend getting kits. The two that I own and recommend getting are the Electronics Learning Lab from Radio Shack and the Discover Electronics Electronics Kit from uh, Sparkle Labs. This is 50 bucks. This is 70 bucks. If you only could get one, I recommend the Electronics Learning Lab. But if you are brand new and you don't know anything, the Electronics Kit from Sparkle Labs is probably easier. If you want to learn more about these kits, check out Basic Electronics Episode 2 that's on these two kits, and that will tell you everything you need to know about kits. Tip number six, Jameco or other parts suppliers. They will save you so much money than going to like Radio Shack or something and buying parts. Two capacitors at Radio Shack is a couple bucks, and here they're pennies. Everything in here is really super cheap. For example, like even I like MOSFETs and stuff. Like these costs, you can't really read it on the screen. But it Radio Shack, they are very overpriced. Now Radio Shack isn't all bad. It's nice if you need something now. But Jameco, definitely worth it. Just make a list of things that you need and order them. Hundred dollar order. I've actually total I've spent a hundred and fifty or sixty bucks at, at Jameco. I have still plenty of, I don't know, it's just a lot of the parts in here are from Jameco, and they're all worth it. I recommend um, checking out other suppliers, too. Maybe Jameco is not for you. Jameco is great for me, though, because it's got everything. It's got tools, it's got passives, it's got this everything. Check them out. Definitely worth it. will save you a lot, mo a lot of money. Tip number seven, tools. Electronics requires a lot of tools, like the multimeter I showed you before, but also simple things like screwdrivers, and pliers, stuff that you probably already have lying around. Also, something to pick up if you're planning on doing it, soldering irons, hot glue gun, definitely recommend. I would recommend a cordless drill. I don't have one, but uh, it's not really in the budget right now. A lot of the stuff you probably already have, but some of the stuff you might not are uh, side cutters. Definitely recommend those. And uh, I don't know, just basic stuff like that. You'll also want you'll also want uh, lighter for heat shrink tubing, um, and other stuff. A lot of times you'll need to heat things up. Play just basic things: pliers, knives. You'll you'll end up using them a lot more than you think. Also. Helping hands, if you solder, they are a must. So, tools, definitely need those, and you can get them cheap. So, highly recommend getting a lot of tools, as many as you can. Tip number eight, dedicated workspace. This is something that I do not have, and I really wish I did. You need to have, it's basically a necessity to have an area just for electronics. Like, this is my table in my room. I use this for homework and stuff. Too easily to get distracted. Too hard to clean up. Like, my, when I am set up to do electronics, I have about 30 or 40 things on my bench. Usually tools, multimeters, parts, and just stuff everywhere. It takes a half hour to clean up. I recommend, if you can, have an, an area just for electronics, nothing else. Or if you have like a, the garage would be a great place. I live in Minnesota. It's cold. Our garage is not heated. Not really an option for about six months out of the year. So if you have a spare bedroom in your house, use that. If you live in a warmer climate where you don't need to heat your garage, I would set up something in there if you have space. Just anywhere that you can that's not gonna, uh, it's, don't try to use 
your electronics area for two purposes. I'd use it for just electronics or other like tool building related things. That's one of the best tips I can give you if you can. It's not an option for everyone of course, but if you can, do that. Tip number nine, enclosures. Project enclosures are often a very expensive thing if you build a project that you want to keep. Usually they are really heavy duty plastic or sometimes metal and they cost they can cost upwards of 15 bucks and that can blow your budget right there for a small project. Eltoids, I use these tins more than anything else. They are so nice because they fit a 9 volt battery perfectly. Can't see that very well, but 9 volt batteries fit perfectly. Outdoor smalls, a, two double A's will fit very nicely. Also, I use the box that my iPod Nano came in because it's very, this is a fourth generation, the new ones aren't that big of a box. But, I mean, very deep enclosure. It's clear, so it looks really cool, especially if you have something that's going to light up. I mean, don't spend a whole lot of money on enclosures if you can. Like, Altoids are two bucks. I mean, a little bit more with tax. But, that's really not that bad considering some enclosures of a similar size cost three or four bucks. And this is metal, like, not even dented. I mean, they're really durable, they're cheap, they're readily available. I don't know why you wouldn't use an Altoids enclosure if you can. I mean, I use them for almost everything. I've never once bought a project enclosure. So, huge money saving tip right there. And finally, tip number 10. I will probably do another one of these videos shortly if I think of more tips. But tip number 10 is you will fail. Don't be afraid of it. This is one of my latest projects. I put an I put a laser pointer in, and a flashlight into a Altoid Smalls tin, ran it off of a AA battery, and built a, a Jewel V for it so it would power it with 1.5 volts instead of the normal like 4.5 volts of coin cell batteries. AA batteries are a lot cheaper than coin cells, I will tell you that right now. Cool project, I was going to do a video of it, and it died last night. It died. Literally, I was going to make this video today. But I ended up doing this instead because this does not work now. I pulled out the enclosure. Something got fried. Not very happy about it. But you will fail. And get, I mean, accept the failure. You will, you're not going to always succeed at everything. I mean, this was a very cool project Well, it worked. And something happened. No idea what. So, and that's not my only failure. I fail... I mean, every time I sit down for a couple hours and build stuff, I will fail several times. Especially with some things that I'm not very comfortable with yet. I don't know a lot about transistors. I don't know a lot about a lot of these ICs and stuff. And stuff does not work. And it probably won't if you're brand new. I mean, even experts probably fail constantly. I would not know. I'm not an expert. But failure is always an option. Just keep that in mind. Don't get... Like, don't stop doing electronics because two projects have failed and you have had one that works. I mean, I have failed more times than I have succeeded. So, that's the biggest tip I can give you. Prepare for failure. Embrace failure. Learn from failure. You will fail. And, I mean, that's all you can do. A lot of times, to say, if you're trying to save money... Like, I'm going to salvage this. This LED is still good. These buttons are still good. So it's not... If money's an option, too. I mean, failure can get expensive if you just throw the projects out. But I do salvage, as you saw before. So, failure, always an option. Prepare for failure. 